Okay, thank you everybody who watched my videos on Cubing World Season 5. I hope you weren't too bored by mostly big blind videos, which is my specialist event, so sorry. That's why I tried to sneak in the odd multi-blind and free blind video, but hopefully you took away something interesting or useful from it, or it motivated you to practice big blind. So what we're going to do for the Season 5 competition is race through some of the top questions, as suggested by you guys. Some pretty good ones and some horrendous ones as well, but we'll see how many we can get through. So, number one, by Cube Freak 7 tips for four blind. We'll see if we can get this in a minute. So, four blind, when you boil it down, is just like a two or three cube multi. It's not much information to remember. It's just like a mental obstacle. It's 52 pieces. And because you can orient centers at the very start to solve as many as you can, that takes it down to about 44, 45, 46, which really means it's a two cube multi. You have to then optimize your, uh, your memory methods just to take in that amount of information quickly. So the best ways to do this are find different techniques for different pieces. For example, audio centers is probably the best thing to do at the end. That's for me personally, because that's really short term memory and try and put images for your wing pieces because corners and centers is just about the right amount of information for audio at the very end to get your top speeds. Um, get an OSU, probably the best advice I can really give because that really cut down my times and it really means you can get really good TPS, especially if you're using a method like R2 or advanced R2. There should be no excuse to get your to have really slow TPS for that. Just really grind it down, practice solves, practice doing sighted solves where you're using just the blind method to solve the cube, like as you would do normally for like a sighted sort of speed solve. Those are my main tips, really. And maybe check out if you're really serious about it, some speed optimal algs. There's a loads of lists out there and check out as many center tutorials as you can and find different ideas for algs. OK, how do you memorize corner parity on bigger cubes, i.e. 5x5 five five or 6x6? Six six? Well, 5x5, five five, you don't need to remember that you have parity, just that you have wing parity. And because you'll have a leftover letter at the end, or you'll notice you have 3x3 three three parity, it doesn't really matter. The way I remember corner parity on even numbered cubes is I cross my legs. As soon as I've solved my corners, I'll realize if I have parity or not, and I'll cross my legs. Simple as that. When it comes to solving centers and I finished, I check whether my legs are sol uh, crossed, and that tells me whether I need to solve parity. Okay, best cubes for blind speed solving. At the time, it's going to be the Mo Yu Osu and the Sheng Shao 5x5. You can mod it somewhat, that makes it better for slice moves, so it doesn't lock up at all. But until the MoU 5x5 comes out, that's the best cube for now, but we'll see. Looking ahead tutorial. That was suggested by Ye Yasin Cuba, Yasin Cuba. Sorry if I say that wrong. I, su I su assume you mean thinking ahead because you can't really look ahead. But in terms of thinking ahead, that's really down to getting your memo just about right. So, and how you group things together. When I make images, I group things in sets of eight, uh, 10 or 12, and then I try and make the sentence flow as much as possible. So if I have an object like AB, it could be the band ABBA or um, CD, like ABCD, for example, it could be ABBA, CD. I'll try and just make little subtle links together, like an ABBA CD is all, all of a sudden one image. Or if that's not how you want to memorize, AB could be ABBA, CD, listening to a CD player, and they could be dancing. It's just really tweaking your memo as you memorize, just to make things flow and a bit easier. Okay, how to keep track of everything in 4x4 four four and 5x5 five five blindfolded? Centers is the easy part for that. If you really want to make sure you've got everything, you can just count the centers, how many are solved, and then count how many targets you've got, for whether you've got a floating buffer or a fixed buffer. And it should it's just simple subtraction. The only problem I can really think of is wings, because wings can be quite hard sometimes. The way I do that is I know beforehand that I've got 24 wings to solve, so I always start with the number 24. As I make images, I always do them in sets of twos, 
And I always try to make my larger sentences or images in sets of eight, 10 or 12. So when I've got my first image, I know I'm half done if I've got 12 letters in there and then I've got 12 more to go. And then for things like two cycles, I just keep subtracting off that 24. If I've got 22 targets when I should have 24 because there are no solved wings, for example, I know to, I basically know that I'm not done. How I would find wings that I haven't quite located yet, properly yet, is I do something that I, I've, it's probably not the most efficient, but I do something a bit like random sampling. So I'll pick a letter, a random letter. It could be the letter M. I'll see what become what comes immediately after it. Is that an image I recognize? No, but if it's not, then it could be a brand new cycle, but I'll check the next one anyway. If it's M to N, I'll check what's next. It could be O. And if NO is a letter that I've already memorized, it could be no, then I know that this cycle I've already done. So I'll try another edge piece. If NO or MN isn't an image that I've got, I'll start memorizing that cycle. And that's basically how I memorize all my wings, how I make sure I've got all my wings. Finally, how to keep, oh no, sorry, we've done that. And that was by um, Efanowal, sorry. How to freshen up before two consecutive blind solves by Asherit Mahish. Um, how to freshen up. What I do now is I just do sighted souls in between. It's quite simple. Or I basically just try and focus my mind on something else. I'll listen to music or I'll do a sighted solve or I'll um, just talk to somebody on the computer. Or if it's in a competition, I'll just go, I'll walk away and speak to somebody or I'll just anything. As long as I don't rehearse my memo, as long as I don't remember what I've just done. Another good tip is to use as much audio as you can without um, risking going wrong or using it insecurely. Because the more audio I can use, the longer, no, the less time it spends in your short term memory and it decays in the brain fairly quickly. So more audio means much, much, much better forgetting of a solve after you've actually done it. A good example of this is Callum, CHJ, Judge, with his audio memory. Uh, those were the best questions. Thanks for watching.